Hello, I hope you're doing well today. I'd like to welcome you back to Jazz, Rags, and Blues, book one. This is lesson four. We're going to cover pages eight and nine in the book today. Alleluia. All right, so starting at the top of page eight, let's take a look at a few things before we dig into some notes. So it says there, happily with spirit underneath the title. But after that, we see something that's really important. It says, play the eighth notes evenly. So a lot of times in this book, we've got swing, uh, but in this piece, we do not. So instead of counting one and two and three and four and, we're just going to count a nice even one and two and three and four and. So no swing, but that doesn't mean there won't be syncopation. There's actually quite a bit of syncopation throughout this piece as is with most of the pieces in this book. So whether you're swinging eighth notes or not, um, doesn't mean matter. You could still have syncopation or not syncopation either way. But in this piece, we do. Now below that, uh, let's take a look at our key signature first. So we have one flat. And of course, the most important thing about this is recognizing that that's a B flat. So every B that you encounter in this piece is going to be flat. Now, it's not quite as important to know this, but still helpful to know what key we're in. And so a lot of people would say, I got one flat, I must be in the key of F major. But remember, there's also minor keys. And if you want to be sure, go to the end of the piece, the very last note in the bass clef, 95% of the time, this will tell you what key you're in, what that note is. In this case, it is a D. So we're not actually in F major, but we're in its relative minor, which is D minor. D minor has one flat as well, B flat. So we're actually in a minor key. So that does give you, even before you play it, that does give you an idea of the sound of this piece. It's not going to be quite as bright and cheerful. It's going to have a little more of a melancholy uh, sound to it. Minor keys sometimes are described as sad, but it, it depends. I find it to be just more variety. Um, and sometimes the minors can sound great, actually. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of idea that it's not quite as bright as, say, a major's, uh, major key. The other thing is the time signature. We've got four, four times. So we just got four beats per measure throughout. And, of course, we've got treble clef and bass clef. Always good to check that out because sometimes you could be starting with your right hand in bass clef as well. Or your left hand in treble clef as well. All right, so first thing is to look at this right hand. We're gonna start with our notes, and notice our first note is a D, not above middle C, but a D octave above middle C. So we're actually way up here with our fourth finger on this D. And notice that there is a rest on beat one. It's only an eighth rest, and then we have a quarter note. So right off the bat, we have syncopation because that rest is on beat one, and then this quarter note comes in on and, and then we hold it through two. And so that makes it syncopation. So remember, syncopation is you got to have something come in on the weak part of the beat, which in this case is the and of beat one, and it's got to hold through the next strong beat, which is beat two, and that's what's happening here. And this particular rhythm is actually found throughout this piece. If you scan the piece, Notice the next two measures on this line have it, where you have this eighth rest on beat one. You've got it also in the second line, and you've got it several times on page nine. So it's pretty common. And during that rest, your left hand actually plays. So you will be playing something on beat one, but uh, at least here at the beginning, your right hand is resting. But I'm going to focus mainly on the notes first. So we've got that four on D, and then we just got C, back to D, back to C, and then our thumb on A. Now the next measure, you've got that rest. During that rest, you're gonna bring your hand down because we need five on A because of these notes that we've gotta reach below the A. And then we go to a bluesy note. We've got an A flat here. And then three on G, two on F, and then thumb on D. That's a pretty cool sounding measure right there. Very bluesy. Going back to the fourth finger on D in the third measure, keep in mind it's still on the and of beat one. So keep, keep that in mind even though we're not digging into rhythms yet. After that four on D, we have C, back to D, 
back to C, the thumb is on A, and then you've got a crossover. So take that second finger over the A to G, but only temporary, because in the second line, measure four, you're coming back to that A with your thumb. So that crossover, you don't want to move your thumb when you cross over, you want to keep it on A, because you're coming right back to it. On measure five, we're back up to four on D, again on the end of beat one, and this is uh, kind of like measure one again. Three on C, back to D, C, thumb on A, and then we have that brief rest, and you're gonna switch to five on A. So that puts four on A flat, three on G, two on F, thumb on D. Take that two that you played on F and bring it to E. And then on measure seven on the third line, that's three on F, three on F, and then you have two E's. And that E that's tied is also syncopation. It comes in on the and of three. You're holding it through beat four. And in measure eight, we end with our thumb on D. In measure nine, we have a D minor chord. Keep that thumb on D, third finger F, five on A, D, F, and A. It's a D minor chord. You're gonna play and hold that for the entire measure because it's a whole note. On the bottom line, keep your fifth finger on A. You're gonna play it again, but don't move that. That is a common tone for this chord we're going to. So you've got A up there. Your fourth finger is gonna play G and your thumb moves to C sharp. Now, depending on where you played that D minor chord, you might have to slide up to it because of the C sharp. So if you're way down here, you're gonna have to slide way up here. But if you play that D minor chord up here, look at my thumb, I don't have to slide the hand up. In measure 11, you go right back to that D minor chord. And you got a little bit of rhythm here. You've got it for three counts. It's a dotted half note. You've got an eighth rest on beat four, and then you come in on that same chord again, that C sharp, G and A on the end of beat four, and then you hold it for all of measure 12. So that's syncopation as well. It came in on the and of four, that's the weak beat, and you're holding it through one of the next measure and of course throughout the rest of that measure. Going on to page nine, measure 13, you have a quarter rest this time on beat one. Now on beat two, you're bringing that thumb back to D and third finger to F, so it's almost like you're playing that D minor chord except you have a four on G. So it's D, F, G in the next measure, rest, and then five on A, four on A flat, three on F, uh, G, excuse me, two on F, thumb down to D, bring the two over to E. In the last measure, F with your third finger twice, and then two E's, with your second finger, that's a syncopated rhythm as well. And on the second line, measure 16, you got your thumb on D. And you hold that for four counts. In measure 17, bring that fourth finger back up to D, just like at the beginning. On the and of beat one, and then three on C, back to D, back to C, thumb on A. The next measure, you have that eighth rest, Bring that five down to A, just like we did a few times before. And then four on A flat, G, F, thumb down to D. Now this is a little different in measure 19. It's not four, but three you bring up to the D and that's so we can reach the next note with our fifth finger, F. And then we're back to D. C, thumb down to A, and then the temporary crossover, two to G. Keep the thumb on the A, because in measure 20, you're right back there with thumb on A. You're gonna hold that for four counts, and then again in measure 21, it's three, not four, but three on the D. Five on the F again, back to D. Two on C, thumb to A. In measure 22, we jump. Five on the A, A flat, G, F, thumb down to D, bring the two over to E, 
And the last line, measure 23, we got F with our third finger twice. Two E's with our second finger. Measure 24, thumb on D. And we got a fermata on this D. So it's three counts plus the fermata. So you're going to want to hold it perhaps five, six counts. It's really whatever you feel in the moment. But use that time because you're going to be, uh, and you've got pedal too, by the way. There's a little bit of pedal there. And the cool thing about that is as soon as I have the pedal down, I can lift and go to my next note, which is a bass clef D. So the song ends with your right hand in bass clef and you're playing that D. Now, um, be careful that you don't play a B. You're reading that as the third line, so you might be thinking, but that's, that's a B or a B flat. If it was treble clef, that's true, but it's bass clef. So even though bass clef is written up where your right hand plays, that's actually third line bass clef. So be careful about that. That's a D. After the D, you have E, and then the next measure, third finger on F, another F, and then E twice, and we end the song with a D. What's, what's pretty cool about that is look at the pattern of notes and rhythms starting on the last two notes of that third line. The last two notes of the third line was a D and an E. And then going on, F, F, E, E, D. You're repeating that when you come down to bass clef. D, E, F, F, E, E, D. So realize that. Instead of saying, oh, what are these notes in the bass clef? Instead of just trying to... It's good to know those notes. You definitely want to be able to do that. But for this piece, it's better to recognize... You're repeating this pattern one octave lower. And I think that's just going to be easier to learn, to hear, to feel. And that's what the music's doing. So um, it's really good to recognize that. And I do believe that'll make it easier. So now let's look at the rhythm. So I talked about the syncopation and there's a lot of it. And it really occurs where a, a lot of it occurs where those eighth thrusts are. So at the very beginning of the piece, we already talked about it. You have the rest on beat one, you come in on and two. So remember, and two. Now, you don't want to say two and, because if you did that, and two and is actually one and a half beats, but this is a quarter note. So it comes in on the last half of beat one and the first half of beat two. The C that's after that D is on the and of two. And then we're back to three and four and. So that measure is one and two and three and four and. Now when you go into measure two, it's the same rhythm. You have that eighth rest, use that eighth rest to move your right hand and then you come in on and two and three and four and. Let's listen to those two measures now back to back. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and going on it starts out with the same rhythm but there's more eighth notes at the end so in the last measure it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so if we're going at a fairly slow pace, which actually we're not going terribly slow. Measure four feels like an eternity, but you got to count it out. Otherwise you risk uh, rushing measure four. Measure five continues now. It's actually almost the same thing again. So measure five is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and now measure seven is a different rhythm. It's just one and two and three and four and, and then you have your long whole note. So in measure seven, there is syncopation on the last beat and a half. So where that tie occurs is syncopation. Now it doesn't feel like a whole lot of syncopation, but it is because 
you have this long E. It's tied, but together that's a beat and a half. And it's coming in on the and, so the weak part of beat three, but it's being held through beat four, and that makes it syncopation. So again, that measure is one and two and three and four and I have the wrong fingering, but I'll explain that for example. Going on to measure nine. So remember, these next few measures, these are four beats. One and two and three and four. And I'm just going to speed it up now for time. Uh, measure 10, same thing on that chord. Measure 11, dotted half note. <clears throat> so one and two and three and rest on four and then and one and two and three and four and so this chord is syncopation as well it came in on the and of beat four going to the top of page nine it's so first and only measure in the right hand that has no syncopation with a rest so you're resting on beat one and then you come in on two and three and four and so that's pretty basic going on again it's kind of like our Syncopated rhythms from the beginning. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And in fact, measure 14 and 15 are replicating the right hand only though in measures six and seven on the previous page. So if that felt familiar, it was. It's the exact same notes, fingering, and rhythm for the right hand. The left hand will be different. Going on now to the second line on page 9, measure 17, we're back up to basically the very beginning of the song. This is repeating uh, the very beginning, note for note, rhythm for rhythm, in both hands, actually. So, measure 17, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and i stand corrected the slight little difference there is measure 19 we don't go to four on d we go to three on d and there's that f but other than that it is the same as the beginning so I apologize, that is a little different in measure 19 and in measure 21. So picking it up right there in measure 19, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and going on one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and and then we'll hold if your pedals down you can lift get into position and remember this down here in the bass clef is a repeat of what you just played in the right hand four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and keep holding because you have a fermata there as well so that covers the right hand let's dig into the left hand so the left hand is going to start pretty low the lowest note there so that is below one ledger line so the one ledger line below uh, the bass clef is an e this is a space note right below that ledger line, so that is a D. And remember, we're in the key of D minor, so that makes sense. The note above it is a fifth above. That is an A. So the bottom space of bass clef is an A. So you're going to start on D and A. That's pretty basic. Four counts, and it comes in on beat one. Now, in measure two, the only difference is your thumb comes up to a B natural. So you're still on the D and it's four counts, the D and the B for four counts. Measure three, you're back to D and A. Four counts there as well. Measure four, we just have this little walking down the scale of A, G, F, E, and then land on D and A together. And measure six, D and B. So that's four counts there as well. Now in measure seven, we have half notes. We go back to the DNA. 
Keep those fingers locked. You're going to move down one note each to C and G. And then you're going to go back to D and A in measure eight. Four counts. Now in measure nine, you've got to rest on beat one. Use that rest to move. It's a big jump. You're moving an entire octave. Your five was on this D. You're going to bring five to this D. And we just have some quarter notes here on beat uh, two. We have D skipping to F on beat three, G on beat two. Measure 10, our thumb is on A. These are all A's, but we have a nice little syncopated rhythm here, which we'll get to more in just a moment. No, actually I'll do that now because there's not a whole lot of rhythm throughout this piece in the left hand, it's pretty basic. So these two measures are actually the most rhythmic of the entire piece in the left hand. So they're all A's with your thumb. But the first A is on beat one. It's an eighth note. Your second A is on the end of one, but it's a quarter note. So that makes it syncopation because you're holding into beat two. And then on the end of two, you have the other A. It is also syncopated because you're holding it through beat three and then through the rest of the measure. So it's one and two and three and four and. So coming off of measure nine, it's gonna sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And the left hand does have more importance, importance here. Um, notice the right hand's just sitting on chords. So your, right, your left hand actually has the melodic idea here. So you definitely wanna bring it out. In measure 11, you've got a rest on beat one Five on D on beat two, F on three, and then G and A on beat four. And then that A is tied. So that is syncopation as well. The A is on the and of four, and then you're holding it, beat one, and then throughout the rest of the next measure. So measures 11, 12 are one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and at the top of nine now we're just doing some basic chords here in the left hand d minor which you played not long ago the bottom of page eight in the right hand so that's d f and a five three and one <clears throat> and that is for four counts in measure 14 you have a g chord but it's inverted g major because of the b natural so you have five on D, two on G, and thumb on B. If you're comparing uh, the D minor chord, the common tone is the D with your fifth finger. So don't move your fifth finger. Your second finger might already be on G and your thumb just slides over to the B. So focus on that when you're practicing that. And you're going right back to that D minor chord in measure 15. Now there it's only two counts. And then you go into this A7. Again, think about the common tone is the A. So from the D minor, this A with my thumb stays right there. Two should be on G. My pinky needs to come up to the C sharp. So again, if you're playing D minor here, you're gonna travel up a little bit to get to that A7 chord. Otherwise, otherwise if you're up into the notes, it's a little bit easier. And then measure 16, you're back to the D minor chord for four counts. Going on to 17, it's a big jump down, but it's basically the same position, minus the third. So in 16, if I think about my five on D and my thumb on A, that's where I'm moving to when I jump down to 17, right there. So I'm basically going back to my D minor chord without the third. So when you practice the jump, Pretty much a locked hand position, but of course your third finger's up because it's not gonna play. So that is just like the beginning again. And we said the right hand here is almost like the beginning. In measure 18, back to D and B for four counts. In measure 19, D and A for four counts. Measure 20, it's that same walk down again that we had in measure four on page eight. 21, D and A, 22, D and B, 23, back to the D and A. Here it's just two counts once again, going down to the C and G. And you'd think we'd come back to the DNA. We did that on page eight in measure 
eight, but no. We're going to go down to B flat and F. Still a fifth, but it feels a little different because of the B flat. So it's almost locked position, but you gotta come up to get that B flat. It's a fermata. You're gonna have the pedal, and that's kind of help, gonna help with your right hand jump down. And when your right hand comes in, there's a rest on beat four in the left hand. Uh, during that rest, you want to come back up, though, in your left hand. You're back to DNA. And then here's our last little bit of syncopation in the left hand. That's that C and G. So it's three and four and is the rhythm for that. So from the D and the A at the beginning of that measure, one and two and three and four. And, and then our last measure... The D and A, and we've got pedal, and the reason for this pedal is we're going to play a D, an octave lower. That is the lowest D on the piano. And so the pedal ensures that that D and A is still sounding when I go down there. And by the way, this is going to be pianissimo, very soft. And you've got the fermata, so you'll hold that out for a little bit. So obviously the left hand is, is a lot less complicated than the right hand, and very little... Uh, movement, especially with syncopation in the left hand, except these three measures, two at the bottom of page eight and the one near the end of page nine. Now we put the hands together. But a lot of this is repetitious, even with the hands together. So at the beginning of the piece, the hand position, D and A in the left hand, four on D in the right hand. So all these rests on the first line in the right hand is when the left hand plays. And then once it plays, that's it. You're holding it down the rest of the measure. So focus on your right hand, and don't focus on the left hand until the next measure. So I'll, let's put it together. And I'm going to start including the counting and some of the rhythms here. So that's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so during that little exchange between measures of your left hand, remember your right hand moves down to the five on A. You want to try to move there during that rest and not the very last moment because you won't have a lot of control. So again, from the beginning, it's one and two and three and four and 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 four. So certainly in measure four, I mentioned this earlier, but even with the left hand playing, you don't want to rush it. So it's very important you count the one and two and three and four. And otherwise, it's very easy to just rush that and walk down. But that will be incorrect rhythms. And that will lead to problems later on as you start when you start playing this faster. So rhythmically, the first three measures are exactly the same. It's the exact same rhythmic movements uh, and all three measures where the left hand's on beat one, the right hand comes in on the and with the syncopation. Uh, the hard thing about it, though, of course, is all the little exchanges. So going to D and B isn't all that hard, but at the same time, you got to get that five down in measure two. Likewise, in measure three, going back to D and A, but you've got the four on the D jumping up. So these jumps are going to take some practice. So you may want to skip the rhythms and syncopation and even the counting and just work, in, work on the, the jumps. And you may say, well, I did that in my right hand and I did it fine. Now when I add the left hand, it doesn't work. So maybe I should go back to my right hand. No, actually, if you've done all you can in your right hand, you just need to dig in now with both hands. And that's why I said just go extra slow. So when I get here, I may stop and measure two and say, okay, what happens first? Well, that's the left hand. What happens next? Okay, that's the right hand, five to A, and then play that. So you notice I, I stopped, I talked my way through it, I went through the steps. So you want to go through the steps first. You don't want to try to rush and jump and just try to get lucky. No, you want to know this in the first, and to know it in order to own it and be in control, you first got to build your foundation of steps. So once you've done that, then of course you can start adding in the rhythms. So that may come in later. Uh, when you get to measure five, it's kind of the same thing again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. 
Now, notice what I did, and I have a habit of doing this sometimes. I would advise against doing that. It works, but it's going to mess up my fingering. Well, actually, it won't. <laughs> Ugh. I'm teaching bad habits. Uh, don't do it. I mean, maybe someday I'll endorse this, but... I slid off my A flat here to G, but what I want you to do is, is not do that. We already learned the right hand and we, we talked about three on G, so make sure that you do the three on G. So just keep the fingers tight. Going on to measure seven, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So, um, Going on to measure nine, and I was gonna say, of course, in measure eight, don't rush that, even though um, it's tempting to. Same thing in measure nine. One and two and three and four, and because the rhythm in measure 10 sneaks up on us. One and two and three and four, and that rhythm in the left hand. So measure nine again is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and don't be afraid to bring that out again that's more that's more of the melody now these chords are more background so don't be afraid to bang that out and they actually put mezzo forte in measure nine for the left hand mezzo piano for the right hand so also a reminder that indeed the left hand has the melody going on to measure 11 one and two and three and four and that might jump up on you, uh, what happens there on the and of beat four. Both hands come together, which is nice, and that is the syncopation, but one and two and three and four and be ready for that. Measure 13 at the top of page nine. We're back to one and two and three and four and so now the right hand takes over the melody. So again, it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's the first time we had that chord so don't let that sneak up on you and it's syncopated rhythm again so measure 13 you had the quarter rest on beat one but in measure 14 one and so be ready for that return to the syncopation the and of beat one so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and going on to measure 17 remember this is very much like the beginning but look where i'm at in measure 16. i got this jump what's going to help you though to learn this jump is d's everything's all about the d's right here so in other words d minor chord the left hand my fives on d I'm going down to five on D here. Almost a D minor chord. My right hand, thumb on D, going to four on D. And when you put the hands together, you're going in opposite directions. So realize that you're, the direction your hands are moving are away from each other. Now I'm practicing at the hands at the same time. That's not a bad idea. But of course, when you put it into play, the music, it's one and now here's a cheat you could have the pedal down on measure 16 and move ahead of time and then make sure on beat one you're off the pedal one and two that's pretty nice because i'm still technically playing that chord without physically playing it and i can move my hands into position if i do it without pedal one and two and three and four and one and two you better be ready to move now the good thing about that is, if you jump fast, you're probably gonna hit this loud, like I did. Well, it is loud, it's forte there, so that's kinda cool. Nevertheless, if you wanna use pedal, by all means, go for it. And you can line up ahead of time. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and. Remember the three on D here. You might want to mark that. We've had so many fours on Ds in the right hand. But this is the first time 
And it'll happen again in measure 21 where you go to 3 on D. That's important because of the 5 on F. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and. So here again, 3 on D. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. One and two and three and four and and remember that goes down to a B flat and F in the left hand. I did not do one and five for my fingering, although they don't have it marked. Uh, one uh, five and two feels really good though. My second finger is on the F, so if you want to do that, by all means, go for it. Do go for it. So going back to measure 23, 5 and 1 on DNA. Now, you might think, well, why don't I go to 5 and 2 on the C and G? Yeah, it's there, but then you're going to get stuck. And 5 and 3 is not comfortable. So I would do 5 and 1 on the C and the G. But 2 and 5 can work out rather well. Likewise, if you want to do one and five, that's perfectly fine too. So your pedal's down here. What I'm going to do with the pedal down, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to move my right hand into the bass clef thumb on D, and I'm going to move my left hand to the D and A at the beginning of measure 24. Lift the pedal, and I continue on four and one and two and three and four, and, and then my last measure, pedal down, one and two, and three and four and so i'm moving and with the pedal down i'm not losing that sound okay so i mentioned the fermatas but there is a retard in measure 23 i hadn't taken that yet um it doesn't give us a lot of information about where the retard ends so one would assume if it's not telling us where it ends it ends at the end of the piece now we can interpret this in two ways the retard begins at measure 23, no doubt. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and. So with this fermata, you would think the retard would just die out and you probably are correct if you thought that. And then once we get going again, it's back to tempo. And so I'm going to say that's true up to a point, maybe. So in other words, if you kept that retard going beyond the fermata, it's just going to die out. There's nothing left to move. It'll be such a snail's pace. But I don't think it would be proper to go really back to tempo either. Maybe a slower tempo. Four and one and two and three and four and one. So I'm not gradually slowing down those last two and a half measures or so, but I'm playing them at a slower pace. So that kind of makes sense to me. Uh, so there's a couple ways to interpret it, but I certainly wouldn't take that retard all the way to the end of the piece. Again, if there's a fermata there, that's just going to slow down things so much that it pretty much puts an end to the retard. Uh, I mentioned dynamics a little bit. I mentioned where in page eight, the third line down last measure, the left hand is louder, and uh, but at the top of page nine, it's back to the right hand. So there's certainly that, and that is the only uh, spot, those three measures at the bottom of eight where the left hand, excuse me, the last four measures on page eight, the left hand has a melody. Otherwise, the right hand does. Now, that being said, you still have some other dynamics. Uh, we also talked about Page 9, measure 17, coming down loud down there. This is the loudest part of the piece, forte. And it stays forte really all the way till the bottom line, 23. Right where we hit that retard, we're getting quite a bit softer. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and, and then you hold it. And... That's when you're soft and kind of slow. Let's 
So that makes for a pretty nice ending, actually. And then the piece starts mezzo forte, and it gets a little bit softer at measure seven. And that's to set up measure nine for when the left hand is loud. That covers it all. Now I'm just going to play it all the way through. It says happily with spirits, so you know it's going to move along a pretty good pace. And of course, the faster we play this piece, the more fun it's going to be, to a certain point, of course. I encourage you not to go too fast too soon, like I would with any piece, but especially in this book because of all the syncopation, the rhythms, and there's a lot of jumping around on the keyboard with the hands. So definitely want to take your time on this. But I'm going to go ahead and play it up to uh, performance speed for you so you get an idea of what it's going to sound like. And I'll give a little count off. So one and two and three and four and. Now, if you're really paying attention, I did make a mistake. I already forgot where. I think it was on the third line. Anyways, you're welcome to go back and look at the third line on page 9. Uh, check out my right hand, measure 21 or 22. I missed some note there. but Otherwise, it's a really fun piece, especially once you get it up to tempo. But like I said, that will probably take some time, and that's okay. This is a hard book. It's only level 1, but this is a hard book. But these pieces are a lot of fun to play, and the syncopation really is what adds to it. So remember, we're not swinging the eighth notes in this piece, so you can play it that way if you want. That might be fun, but um, every now and then it's nice to not have to do swing and just uh, focus on just the straight count and still appreciate the syncopation that's still there despite there not being any swing. So I hope you enjoy this piece, have a lot of fun with it, and do work hard on it because, uh, well, we got the next lesson to look forward to, and I can't wait to see you there.